we are going to talk about operations and composition of functions today. So first we need to learn this different notation. One type of notation you can see is f plus g of x. That means that whatever my f and g functions are, I'm just going to be adding them together. Another one you would see would be f minus g, and that means you're subtracting them. Product, again, I'm multiplying. Quotient, I'm dividing. And then composition is the kind of tricky one. This is where I'm substituting one function for the variable of another. So we're going to get through these first four first, some difference, product, and quotient first, and then we'll talk about composition afterwards. So looking at this first example, um, I've got four functions, f, g, h, and k. And the first thing that part A wants me to do is find the domain of each function. So I'm just going to go through each one. On f, I do not have x in a denominator, and I do not have x in a radical. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. Again, on g, I do not have x in a denominator. I do not have x in a radical, so my domain is all real numbers. Same story on h and on k. All right, so now let's look at some operations. Part b wants me to find h plus k of x. This just means I want to find h of x plus k of x. Here are my two functions, h and k. So that's going to be 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 plus 4x minus 5. And I'm just going to combine my like terms and consolidate. I don't have another x squared term. 3x and 4x gives me 7x. Negative 1 and negative 5 gives me negative 6. And so that is it. That is my final answer. Looking at C, this one is product h times k. So I'm going to take my h of x function and multiply it by my k of x function. So I'm using the same two I did on part b, except this time I'm going to be multiplying them. And I have to do multiplication six times here. I have to make sure everything in this parentheses gets multiplied by everything in my other parentheses. So I'm just going to go in order. 2x squared times 4x. That gives me 8x to the third. Then 2x squared times negative 5 is negative 10x squared. So that's 2 down. 3x times 4x will give me 12x squared. 3x times negative 5 is minus 15x. And then lastly, negative 1 times 4x is minus 4x. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. After I had done my multiplication six times, I'm going to combine my like terms. I don't have another x cubed. Negative 10x squared plus 12x squared gives me 2x squared. Negative 15x minus 4x gives me negative 19x. And then I don't have another constant, so it's just 5 on the end. Okay, on to part D, h minus k of x. This means I'm going to take my h of x function and subtract my k of x function. So I'm still working with those same two as I did earlier. 2x squared plus 3x minus 1 minus 4x minus 5. The parentheses here is very, very important because this minus sign in the middle has to be distributed to my second function. So... What that means is I'm going to get negative 4x plus 5. You have to distribute the negative, and putting those parentheses there increases your chances of remembering to do that. So now I can combine my like terms, and there is my final answer. On part E, we're moving away from H and K, and we're going to look at F and G now. Again, this is subtraction. So I'm going to take f of x and subtract g of x. Here are my two functions, f and g. And the second one I'm going to be sure to put in parentheses because I want to distribute that minus sign. So that will be minus x minus 2, combining my like terms. And there I go. Um, on f, I am multiplying again f of x times g of x. Oops. 
And I'm going to have to do multiplication six times again because I'm multiplying a three-term function by a two-term function. x squared times x gives me x cubed. x squared times 2 gives me 2x squared. 5x times x gives me 5x squared. 5x times 2 gives me 10x. 6 times x gives me 6x. And 6 times 2 gives me 12. Combining my like terms. And that's the end. Okay, last one for this front side. This is my quotient, so this just means I'm going to take f of x and divide g of x. So I've got x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 2. Now, can I simplify this? The answer is yes, and to figure out how, I need to factor the top. So this is just a trinomial, two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5 or 2 and 3. So I can factor the top into x plus 2 and x plus 3. So the x plus 2 and the x plus 2 will divide out to be 1, and so my leftover is x plus 3. Now, if it's the case that you can't simplify anything, you would just leave it like this. Sometimes you'll be able to find a common factor and reduce, but not every time. Okay, now we're going to be moving on to the back and getting into composition. So you'll see this one of two ways. You will either see F open circle of G or F with G inside. And this literally means we're going to be evaluating our function by plugging in our other function for X. So we'll see what that looks like. On this example too, I've got f and g, and I want to find f of g of x. So what this means is I'm going to be taking my function f and plugging in g in its place. So this entire function, the square root of 9 minus x squared, is going to go in place of x in my f function. So that's going to look like the square root of 9 minus x squared squared minus 9. From here, I just proceed as I normally would with an algebraic equation. When I square a square root, it cancels. So I have 9 minus x squared minus 9. Combining like terms, negative x squared is what I'm left over with because 9 minus 9 goes away. So f of g of x is negative x squared. Now what is the domain of that function? In my final function I'm not dividing by x and I do not have x in a denominator. Um, and sorry, and I don't have x in a radical, so my domain is going to be all real numbers. Okay, on to the next example. Again I have an f and a g and I need to find g of f. So that means this time I'm going to be plugging f into g. So this entire thing, x plus 3, is going to go everywhere that I have an x in my other function. So here's one, two places I have to plug it in. So that's going to be x plus 3 squared minus 2 times x plus 3 minus 15. You have seen something very similar to this before when we were talking about functions and evaluating functions. Remember when I'm squaring a binomial, that means I am foiling, not just distributing the square. So this will give me x squared plus 6x plus 9, distributing the negative 2 here, and then combining my like terms. There is my final function. This is g of f. And my domain is going to be all real numbers because I do not have x in a denominator and I do not have x in a radical. Okay, our last two examples for the day. Starting at number four. Again, I've got two functions, f and g. I want to find g of f of three. So this time I'm going to be evaluating f of three first and then plugging whatever that value is into g. So this is different because I have a numerical input for f instead of just x. So my first step is going to be to find f of 3. So here is f. That means I'm going to put a 3 everywhere I have an x in that function. So that's going to be 3 times 9. 
So 27 minus 6 minus 3 gives me 18. So f of 3 is 18. Now that I know that, I'm going to be evaluating g of 18. So in my g function, wherever I have an x, I'm going to plug in 18. So that's negative 18 plus 15, which is negative 3. So if this was just f of x, that is when you would be getting a function, something with x in your answer in the end. But when you're given a numerical input, your output is also going to be numeric. Okay. Now, another way that you might see this notation written would be g of f of x of 3. When the number is to the right, that means you're evaluating it at that value. When the number is to the left, like it is here on example 5, this is just another operation. This means I'm going to add my functions and then multiply the end result by 3. So this just means 3 times whatever f of x plus g of x is. So like we did on the front page, I'm going to add my two functions. 7x minus 1 plus 3x plus 11. Combine my like terms, I get 10x plus 10. And now this gets multiplied by 3. 30x plus 30. So it depends on where your number is. This number being on the left means I'm just going to be multiplying my result. This number here on the right means you're evaluating it at that value. And you're going to have a numeric answer. And that wraps up our first day talking about composition and operations. We are going to be getting into more things with composition as we start talking about inverses here next week.